But the premise of enlightenment, the concept of it, implies that we believe there exists such a realization, such a recognition, such a transformation in consciousness, that that's even possible. And yes, it is possible. That is my premise. That is my experience. That is my conviction. That is my message, that it is possible. Then the second question would be, then what is it? If it is possible to have such a profound shift in consciousness, in identity, then what exactly is that shift made of? What does it do? What is it? What change are we talking about? What type of transformation? What's the result? Why would I want it? And what do I have to let go of in order to get it or get more of it? Because as you'll see, enlightenment, at least in my way of describing and teaching it, is not a black or white kind of thing. Also because enlightenment is not actually an experience. And Again, I'll get into these details. I'll get into these descriptions. But for now, see enlightenment as a spectrum, spectrum of the evolution of consciousness, the awakening of consciousness, the ascension of consciousness, the expansion of consciousness, the increase in the, dens the density or brightness with which an entity, a beingness, a consciousness knows itself. So an increase gradually for most, with some leaps typically, but overall gradually for most. Enlightenment is a process, or at least an aspect of the science of enlightenment, could be described as a process of familiarizing yourself, of getting acquainted to, of becoming familiar with that which you have heretofore not really paid attention to that which you have not recognized, that true state, that natural condition of yourself, which you have not been practicing. You've been practicing a lot of other different kinds of focus points and things, and you've had so much awareness and training in how to be human, according to humans. How to be human, according to other humans, right? So, but what if <clears throat> the true purpose of being human transcends the typical training that we receive in what it means to be human. What if there is this incredible, difficult to describe transformational journey that we are on, that we are meant to be on, perhaps even, a purpose that brought us here, that makes us continue to wake up every day and do what we do and be driven to do what we do, be motivated to do what we do. What if underneath all that, there is sort of a blueprint intention, a baseline purpose that every being potentially perhaps shares as their foundational intention or blueprint for being, for appearing, for manifesting themselves in the form of this mind, body, spirit complex or individuated spark of the Creator, or individuated spark of God, or individuated spark of that universal consciousness, right? The mind-body-spirit complex. Why? Why are we here? And what is possible for us? And where did we develop the term or concept of being a human being? Who gave that to us? Did we originally produce that thought? that association, that concept of what it means to be a human being. And even the assumption, the belief that we are a human being. And what that is limited to for most people in their understanding. When we say, I am a human being, what are we really saying that I am, that we are? And typically you will find it doesn't go far beyond that. That means that we are a body, we are a clump of flesh that goes around this planet having to abide by Newton's laws and um, randomly kind of goes about its job or whereabouts. And it picks up desires along the way. It prefers pleasure over pain. And so it sets out on this journey to create a life for itself where pleasure is prioritized and pain is attempted to be avoided as much as possible. And we try to secure around this physical body this physical vehicle that we believe is us, we then attempt to secure for ourselves a series of ongoing circumstances that provide us with safety, physical safety, 
mental emotional safety, self worth safety, and social safety. And we then continue to live in that situational type of consciousness of being a body surrounding itself with what it then calls my life, filled with components and elements that it has a relationship to with its mind, with its thoughts, definitions and concepts that it has about ideas that it has and beliefs that it has about what it perceives, the objects that it gathers about itself. And then it continues in this sort of assumption, in this bubble of being human, and it continues to try to proliferate that bubble of safety and comfort to expand that perhaps a little bit. Some people are more driven to expand that. They seem a little bit more adventurous. They take more risk. Others seem more conservative with their bubble. They are happy with it as it is, content with it as it is, and they'd rather keep it as it is rather than um, expand and take risks on it. Safety is uh, important to them from the point of view of being the body. And there's a, a lot of other ways in which we could summarize what it means to be human, but I'm just trying to paint a general picture of what we assume it is to be human and that we create this bubble around our mind-body-spirit complex or our entity-ness, our beingness, our perceived self or our assumed sense of self. And we don't really look far beyond that bubble, typically, most people. 